We've got a bit of a special video for you here at the Backyard Tech Channel for a Monday morning that I'm hoping will put to bed some misinformation, misconceptions and misnomers regarding radio and TV broadcasting. G'day everyone. Thank you for tuning in. We do have a bit of a special video here at the Backyard Tech Channel for a Monday morning that I'm hoping will lay to bed some misinformation, misnomers and misconceptions regarding, well, believe it or not, SDI, Serial Digital Interface. Now, I did a video on this, oh, it must have been, what, a couple of months ago now, and a very dear personal mate of mine. Now, I've known this guy for nearly 20 years. MV5. Now he joins us for the uh, Backyard Tech Channel live stream conversations when he gets a chance. He obviously joins us from where he's working, which is for a national broadcaster here in Australia that does both radio and TV. When I did the SDI video, he contacted me and said, listen, how about I make a video for you at work and I can physically show everyone um, SDI systems? And I said, look, that'd be great. Some of the comments that were not published on that video basically asserted the fact that no, I was wrong and that broadcasting uses DisplayPort, HDMI and DVI. Those people who said that could not be further from the damn truth. So MV5 has kindly done an explanation video at work for me that will explain it because he's got access to the physical systems. Now what he has at his work is newer versions of what we ran at the TV station, MV5. So he was also heavily involved in the broadcast of the World Cup Soccer 2018 here in Australia, um, specifically for the radio, but they did have to do a lot of um, splitting of the audio from the inbound TV signal. Now, for those that don't understand it, Using SDI, you can actually strip the audio from the video. You can demux it. Now, for those that, who are absolutely inane in thinking that it's done via optic fiber, no. Everything is done via SDI in the broadcast industry, especially in the TV industry. And as I said in that video, radio can use it if necessary. They can actually strip the audio from the video signal using a de-embedder. So, for this video, I'm going to hand over, as I said, he's a very close mate of mine, dear friend. I've known the guy for nearly 20 years. It is MV5, and he's going to show you how it's done. Let's get into it. Hey, everybody. It's Brendan here, also known as MV5 on the Backyard Tech channel. Uh, Mr. Backyard Tech himself has asked me to take you through a few things uh, in relation to what SDI is and uh, how it's used. So I'm gonna do that now. Uh, you'll have to excuse the usual quality of the videos not being up to his standard, but I'm working right here. So I'm gonna take you through a, uh, a bit of a setup and um, show you a few things around in the broadcast, how SDI is used. So, all right, cool, we'll get on with it. So first thing to know is SDI comes, it's usually delivered via a BNC cable. I'm gonna flip this around so you guys can see what I'm looking at. Just bear with me, actually I don't think I can, so I'm gonna do it the old fashioned way. BNC cable, which is this kind of cable here. Basically it's a locking cable, so you can probably see the grooves on it. it means it'll slide in, so you slide in there, and then you twist it to lock it into place, and that way it won't get loose. Um, so that's, for the most part, all forms of all forms of SDI travel on the uh, the BNC coaxial cable um, using the SMPTE 292 and 295 protocols, I believe it is. Uh, if you want to know the technical details, go and have a look at Mr. Backyard Tech's channel. He's got all the details there, and they are quite accurate, as far as I can tell. Apologies about the shakiness. Um, also, in this video, we are going to go to a few areas that are quite loud. We'll take you into a couple of control rooms uh, in at my workplace. 
and uh, during that period I apologise if the audio does go downhill but that's going to happen in these areas. Alright, uh, so we're going to take a quick look at a setup I've got here and one of the uses of, of uh, SDI. Okay, so this device we have here is what's called a Black Magic ATEM switcher. This is a combination SDI and HDMI vision switcher. And the device next to it here is a web presenter, which is also fed by either SDI or HDMI. Um, the reason we usually use SDI is it's a much more professional format. You can transmit it for longer distances, and I mean, you can usually transfer between SDI and HDMI quite easily. Um, to do that, you would use one of these little devices over here. Flip it over. This is a Blackmagic Design HDMI to SDI converter. Now, these things used to be very expensive. They've recently come down in price dramatically, and you can pick them up these days for around 60 to 70 Australian dollars. Um, so quite simply, the HDMI comes in on this end. There's a power, so that's the HDMI power cable there, and then you've got two outputs, which is really handy. So you can have one for monitoring and one for transmission, or you can split it off and take it into multiple places. Now, at the moment we're using that, we've got it hooked up to our little prosumer camera here. It's a good camera, we're just using a micro HDMI out. That shows up the cable and into the HDMI to SDI converter, which in turn is going out to the vision mixer. And that's the that's the view you can see there. You can see the, little, see the iPad, and so that's coming in. And you can also see the, volume, the uh, audio levels there, meaning that it's transmitting both audio and video. Um, as Mr. Backyard Tech mentioned in his video, we can have up to eight audio channels on SD video. Uh, this will just be taking two, just be using the top two channels, so channels one and two, quite simply because it is picking up off the microphone up here. Um, it does say it's got 5.1 channel, so it may be using a couple more, but at this stage, we're not de embedding them. We have no use for them in this setup. So, that's pretty simple. Um, basically here, HDMI converted to SDI, SDI into a vision switcher. Vision switches are very handy because they mean you can have multiple inputs and outputs. Um, at the moment, I've only got the one, in, one output or input into it, but you'll also see it. The, other, the other monitor over here is following this monitor, which is where I'm selecting which source is going to air. Now this is a, uh, a fairly new product from Blackmagic. Uh, it's capable of up to 4K video. Uh, actually, oh, is it 4K or HD? It might only be HD, I apologize. Um, but that's all by HDMI or SDI. I will give you a look at the back of it in just a moment. Bear with me. Good old arm over video, which is a staple from Mr. Backyard Tech's channel. I'm actually going to stand up and come around. So, if you'll excuse the mess here, get something out of the way. On the back of this device, you'll see we've got both HDMI inputs as well as SDI inputs. These are BNC plugs, so this is what the other end of the cable looks like. Um, so that's just the standard BNC, and you'll see you can pull it out there. Once you plug it back in, you simply twist. Can be a little bit stubborn, but then it locks in in there. Okay, so what else is on the back of this device? Well, you'll see down over here, we've got program output. I can't actually show you the labels because I can't get the iPad here low enough. Um, you've got a HDI, oh, sorry, an SDI program output, an SDI multi view, which means that you can see all of the sources that are plugged in across all of the back here. And you've also got HDMI output for that. So if you're using a normal TV, you can still plug it in via HDMI. Then over here, we've got these two brilliant things, which are XLR plugs. Very handy, meaning we can plug in, sorry, bear with me. We can plug in an XLR mixer. Um, that's analog audio. Plug it straight in the back there. And we can choose to use 
a separate audio system as opposed to the cameras on board video uh, microphones. Uh, same sort of thing, this device over here is the web presenter which converts the SDI signal which is coming from um, Vision Mixer over here, so you can see that, that cable there. Actually no, that's right, that's uh, this cable that comes around here. And that comes out as a USB webcam, meaning you can quite easily stream it into a computer device with limited fuss. It's a lot easier to do this when you're looking directly at it as opposed to looking into the camera. There we go. Um, you'll see it's also got the option for HDMI in and loop out. Same with this down here, SDI in. And then we've got SDI loop out and program out. And if we want to, we could also put analog audio or stereo into this device and send it in. We use this kit here for Facebook Lives mainly. mainly. Uh, it's quite a simple setup, um, but it does allow us, we've got multiple cameras that we can plug into it and use it in that, that manner. Alrighty, I'm gonna take you guys in to see a little bit more about the capabilities of SDI and how it works for distributing video. Okay, so I apologize for the noise. Actually, I'm gonna turn that down slightly. Bear with me. Okay. So, what we have here is what we call a video router. From this, we're able to choose, we've got 12 outputs and 12 inputs. We can choose what input we send to what destination. So for example, this monitor here, which I can't show you too much because technically that is copyright content, is on destination 12. Let's just set the, there we go. So, if I wanted to change what was coming out of that, I've now put that selected, I can choose an alternative source. So let's go to the HD source, take that, and all of a sudden we've got a new picture. So basically what this is, this will allow us to assign destination, or sources to destination. So you pick your destination, pick your source, and take that source through. Um, so this is all SDI, it's 12 by 12, as I mentioned earlier. Down here you can see we've got some uh, an interesting device. This is a patch bay. So under these, we're able to patch video, SDI video, much in the same way you'd patch either analog or digital audio. So we use special kind of connectors for those. They're called Kinear plugs, and that's what that's capable of. You'll also see up here, we've got some setup box which are working via HDMI. Once again, like on the camera, we've got the Blackmagic converter, which will convert them HDMI into SDI. Uh, as I mentioned with the, uh, the patch by earlier, here's a couple in action. Um, I'm going to interrupt someone's signal for a sec just so I can show you what these look like. I'm supposed to be on one. No, I don't. Oh, yes, I do. No, that's the wrong thing, sorry. So we'll just interrupt this, uh, whatever this is. So that's what these plugs look like. They're just patches. They go plug straight in. Uh, if you look inside them, it's like that. Shit, which plug did that come out of? I hope it was that one. Well, I'll go back and check that in a second. Um, so yeah, once again, SDI is like audio. You can quite easily divert it and patch as required. Now, I'm gonna take you off to a slightly bigger display and show you SDI on a slightly larger scale. Okay, so this is an area where SDI really comes into its own. We're actually in a TV studio here. Um, so what will happen is that monitor there will be an SDI monitor um, and that signal will be routed down from an external source, uh, be it Sydney or wherever it is. Uh, this camera here is also an SDI camera. Uh, it may not be that much to look at, but I don't know if you can see in there. Probably not. But once again, you'll see it's got the BNCs. Um, they are SDI and that is coming out as an SDI out. Um, same with the older style cameras, which we have actually retired, unfortunately, is these will either be using Triax or in smaller applications, SDI out. 
Um, they're both usually capable of both. Well, sorry, no, no, no correction there. My apologies. They're not usually capable of both. Usually they're one or the other. Um, but yes, you are able to to get an SDI signal out of most broadcast cameras these days. Now, I'm going to take you into the mask control room for this television station. And I apologize, it's going to get very loud, but I'll try to take you through what we've got. Okay, this is the control room for the studio. Right here, this is another version of a video router. Once again, this is all SDI. Um, and it's a, basically a physical version of what that smaller router we showed you earlier was. Um, so instead of having just one row of buttons, you've got multiple rows, you've got preview and program, and you've also got an auxiliary bus. So on this, you're able to take things, uh, so let's see if I can bring something up. So we've, once there, we've just got that. So we're able to preview stuff as required. Um, unfortunately, the cameras are turned off, so I can't actually show you any of them. Um, and SCI comes into its own, especially when you're bringing out of things like this. Now, this is a playout program. It's what feeds the vision uh, on the unit on the back, uh, so the TV at the back of the studio. And you can have whatever you choose up on that, that display. Okay, we're going to have a bit more of a look around and we'll show you this. This is a router. This is a station router. Now, that's a lot of BNCs I see you saying. That is exactly right. It is. Um, and that's one of the reasons that SDI is preferable to HDMI is because BNC, you're able to lock the cable in. So can you imagine if this was full and that cable came out? You've got to try to work out which one of it is it was. So so it came out and was just hanging, hanging down here somewhere. It's gonna take you hours or well probably not hours, but it'll take you a while to find a HDMI in. You plug it back in and as soon as a little bit of a pull comes on it, it's back out. Whereas with BNC you can give them a good yank and they will stay in place. So, once again, this is the front of one of those routers. This is a uh, SD video router. I believe it's 96 by 96. Uh, so it's 96 inputs, 96 destinations. Um, and that's controlled by panels like these ones. So you can choose your destination. It's a similar concept to the smaller router I showed you upstairs, but on a larger scale. And once again, you can see we're able to get patch bays and turn off different sources. Now, these devices. These are media servers. And I'm not talking like your home media server. These are massive, multi-channel playout servers, uh, specializing in broadcast quality video and audio. These don't usually come with HDMI. They're all SDI. And if we come over to this rack over here, we'll, we'll introduce you to another format, which is ASI. That's similar to uh, SDI, but it's even more specialized. It's actually a transport stream which is designed for moving video from one place to another. Now, just to give you an idea of the scale of cabling we're talking, can you imagine this? I'm gonna take a step back. Doing that with HDMI cables. Now, HDMI is good for maybe two, three meters. You're not gonna get where you need to go with a HDMI cable. Whereas with an SDI cable, you've got up to about 1.5 kilometers. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what more I can really tell you guys about SDI and its uses, but basically you know that it is a broadcast standard across the, uh, the board. I'll take you into an edit booth quickly. Um, so obviously most of our stuff is file-based, 
but we do still have these devices, which are VTRs. Um, if I could get around the back, you'd see that they all have SDI in and out. Um, it's a broadcast standard, has been for quite a long time, and it does move with the technology. So uh, in Mr. Backyard Tech's uh, channel's video on it, he mentioned um, SD, SDI, HD SDI, and 3G SDI. There's actually two more. There's 3G, uh, sorry, yep, the 3G SDI that he mentioned, which is for HD. You've got 6G SDI, which is 6 gigabit per second SDI. And now they've also released 12 gig SD, SDI, which I believe is for 8K video. Um, while that's not, not used around consumers, it is used in professional devices for capturing um, basically digital cinema. So people in movies will shoot at 8K and then down sample for the audience to be able to consume that. Anyway, I hope this has been informative and uh, I've gone on for too long. Enjoy and uh, yeah, catch you next time.